Hello, uh, hello, 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 hello. Right, so next one, we're going to be looking at ILSs. But before we do that, I promised you a quick look at uh, um, the flight path we did uh, from the last video after I stupidly managed to delete it. Um, so let's have a quick look at this then. We flew out of Booker um, and then this left hand line here, I hope you can see it, but that was our outbound. So we are flying along this to the north. And I hope you can just about see there that this is not a straight line, even though we were flying in a straight line to the NDB, keeping the needle pointing forwards the whole time, or as, at least as close as I could get it. You can see this is arcing round to the right. And the closer we get, the, the sharper this arc is. It's, it's not a parabola or a hyper, hyper, hyperbola. Not a hyperbole. Nah, anyway, words. Um, but you can see that we are curving off to the right. And that was because we had a wind from right to left. So we were pointing straight at it the whole while. But because we were getting pushed off to the left, it meant we were in a constant right-hand arc. And we can see this again as well. When we then uh, we overflew uh, Henson and then did a sharp left, pointed straight uh, uh, at this NDB, and this arc is even more pronounced, actually. So the wind really was pushing us from right to left here, and you can see that arcing round. To prove that it was wind, when we did the 180, we can see this time the arc is going to the left because we were flying southeast along this line here. And you can see that we're ever slightly turning left more and more and more as we get closer to Henton. And that's again because the wind was coming from up here. So it proves there was a wind effect uh, and not me just flying in a constant, uh, constant right hand turn because here it's a constant left hand turn. And then there was no NDB down here, so we didn't have a, you know, the, this corresponding line was just flying south the whole while. So I hope that sort of um, demonstrates how wind can, uh, can throw you off quite considerably. So let's have a look at the ILS then. Hello, here we are. Um, we're currently sat here at uh, East Mids. Uh, East Midlands International, or oh, it would be if I could zoom out. And yeah, my grain textures are gone to pot. I'll reinstall uh, UK 2000. Anyway, that's not particularly problematic. So if we have a quick look see at the charts, here's East Mids. Um, and we are. Click. The ting. There we are. Um, I appreciate this is going to be really small, particularly if you're on a mobile or whatever. Um, but we will take off from 2.7. Um, I've not checked the wind, but I haven't got my real world wind turned on anyway, so there won't be any wind. Uh, and we're going to shoot for this ILS here. So remember, it's like a VOR, except it's not omnidirectional. So we'll only pick it up when we're in this cone here. All right. And we can use the NDB to help get us there. Um, and then we'll come in and shoot the ILS and we'll have a look at what the localizer looks like and the glide slope as well, which we've not really done yet. We did a little sort of demo of it in the airliner in one of the earlier videos, but we'll, we'll have a look at that in a little bit more depth. So if I hover over here on the information box, we can see East Mids EGNX is a Cat 3 ILS um, and it's got a DME for 2.7, um, 109.35 course uh, of the runway is 2.71 degrees and it's a 3 degree glide slope so that's nice and easy. So let me just put that out of Zive. Let's turn off centre screen and again we're going to be focusing on, on the nav aids and stuff here rather than the uh, flying skill, as will become very apparent. So let's get the radio, uh, in fact, no, let's get the engine started before my battery dies, because I don't think the battery is 
hugely impressive. So mixture goes in to fully rich, feet on pedals, clear prop, and oh, come on, stupid click spot. There we go, lovely. And let me just turn the speakers down a smidge, that's better. Happy days. Right, fuel pump can come on. Lights I'm not too bothered about. We're not online for this. Um, but I'll flick some of those things. I'll tell you what, I'll stick them all on. Why not? So, East Midlands East DME, uh, DME, NDB, is on 353.5. Nice, easy one to remember. 353.5. And let's see if we actually pick it up. Nope, not at the moment. The ILS that we'll be shooting for, 109.35. So we'll stick that on that one. So, come on, where's my click spot? Uh, 109.35. Transfer. And we'll stick it on NAV2 as well, which is this one. Um... In fact, no, there's no point doing that because these are both uh, the same. Uh, in fact, no, I'll tell you what, let's do it. Why not? Why not? We'll see if there's any difference between the two radios. Come on, wait. 109.35. And we can see we've actually picked both of those. Ah, so NAV2 doesn't have a glide slope. Uh, it's just got the... Um, bearing so the, the localizer uh, so there we are we're not going to worry about anything else on the radio because we're not flying proper proper uh, we'll just zero out our altitude uh, and let's get a move in so we're in the Cessna 172 again just because it's got um Slightly nicer instruments that you can see a little bit easier than the Grob. And we'll do a full on Ryanair taxi. We don't need full runway length in this aircraft, so we're not going to use it. And again, I can't taxi for Toffee. But yeah, if we go fast enough, we'll touch the wing on the floor. Days. Okay, so we'll go along L for a little bit. Um, but as I say, we don't need full runway length. Oh, a bit of a power slide. Come on, turn your brute. Thank you. So, how's all the isolation going? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fun times, isn't it? I hope you're keeping well. Right, I think I can see a turn off here, so we're going to come off here. And we'll dress onto the runway. Yes, high speed exit. So as a quick reminder then, if we're looking at the um, looking at this radio here, it's a left right swingy thinging. So that's telling us whether the line we want to be on, which is the runway centre line that we're just about to cross, and we're on it. So it's perfectly vertical. If we are to the left, therefore the center line is on our right hand side, we can see the center line indicated there is to our right. So that's what it's telling you. It's telling not where you are, but where the center line is that you want to be on. And then if we come around this way, we can see it's on our left. Now, what we do need to do is actually key in the correct heading or course, should I say, which is around 271, which is about there. So up, up and away. Power. Oh, this is a flying shed, isn't it? Um, yeah, we're not going to bother with flap. Chugga, 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 chugga. There's 60 knots, and that should be enough airspeed to get up, even without flap. Yes, thank you, please. And has our NDB sprung into life? It looks like it has. Down there in the corner, the uh, oops, the, the yellow needles, so East Mid's East. 
is obviously going to be behind us because we're currently heading to the west. So, oh, rudder pedals are a bit sticky. Excuse, and I'm sticking to it. So we'll turn crosswind until we're roughly northerly. Something like that. Get ourselves trimmed out a wee bit. And we'll get up to a circuit height. I don't know what the circuit height is at East Mids, but over the thousand. Oh, I should have put joystick cam on. Never mind. And we'll turn downwind. Okay, I don't know what the reference points are. I'd probably imagine it's this main road here. But, um... Until we're roughly easterly. And what we'll do now then is we'll just keep flying easterly until the NDB, East Midlands East, is due south of us. So how can we do that? Well, we can basically wait until this needle is pointing to the right. We know that if we're flying east and the needle points to the right, then whatever it's pointing at, if we look at the compass, must be due south. So let's give that a go. And we should find that we will then overfly the NDB when we are on the centre line of the runway. The extended centre line. Because we'll actually be quite far out. And then again, we'll have a look on Plan G and see what, our, uh, what we actually flew. Uh, sort of matches up what we're expecting it to have done fully by lying on the instruments here. So we're doing reasonably nice. We'll lean out the mixture a smidge and we'll try and trim for a thousand feet or thereabouts. So still flying due east, watching this needle spin round on the ADF. We should overfly the M1 if we haven't done so already. We have. There's the M1 across the front of the runway here. Not Kegworth, Loughborough. And get a little bit trimmed. Give me a fighting chance, eh? <coughs> So, yeah, still more or less east. The needle on the ADF is swinging round ever so slowly. But the closer we get to it, the, the more twitchy that becomes, the quicker it will start spinning. And this should be really, really easy and straightforward. <coughs> chugga, 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 chugga. There we go, it's around about 45 degrees-ish now. So it should start moving pretty quick. And then when it is off to our right-hand side, then we'll turn base leg. And pretty much fly straight towards it, and we'll see... There we go, we've picked up the glide slope now. So this line has just suddenly sprung into life. And that's more or less off our right-hand side of the starboard so we'll swing round we'll fly straight towards the NDB and we'll see actually if it is bang on the center line of the runway so round we go more or less a coordinated turn there right. and we're almost pointing straight at the NDB East Midlands East. That's us pointing almost straight at it. No wind to worry about. I haven't got wind turned on. And there we are. We must be over the centre line. And now the NDB has just fallen over. So if we swing round to the right now, so round about heading 271, we should be just to the left of the centre line. Yes, we are. Why are we to the left? Because we overflew it and went past it. So what I'm going to do now is purely look at the ILS. 
So this line here is coming into the middle. That means we're almost on the center line as we saw when we were on the ground. And now if I turn in towards that heading of 271, we should be able to stay on the center line. And actually, if we look out the window, we're pretty much on it. A horizontal line is perfectly horizontal, meaning we are on that three degree glide slope. Now we are just above it i.e. the line is below, so we are going to reduce our power and pitch down and we'll see if we can roughly stay on both of these two lines. It's a bit of a rub your tummy, pat your head job, but we're trying to keep our left and right correct using the vertical needle and we're trying to keep our up and down correct using the horizontal needle. And in theory, if that glide sloop is perfectly horizontal, so we're bang on it, then we should see two red and two white lights on the Pappy lights at the start of the runway. If I just pitch our nose up a smidge like that. So we can see we're bang on the glide, we're more or less bang on the center line. Now we're a little low, as indicated by three red lights, and on the nav radio we can see the glide slope is slightly above us now. So we'll increase power, just lift the nose, and we're just trying to keep that crosshair perfectly perpendicular. And that will take us down, because the glide slopes at an angle to the ground, that will eventually have us on the runway. And this is Cat 3, so if we were in a Cat 3 capable aircraft, we could get all the way down to wheels on the floor. Cessna isn't a Cat 3 aircraft. So we're still on the glide. We're good on sensor line. Now the glide is right below us. We can pull the power back. And I was coming in far too fast for a proper approach here. And then we're wheels on the floor. And we can see, looking out the window, that we're actually on the runway. oil these pedals up they're a little bit sticky so let's just do that one more time why not one more time for good luck let's see if I can fly it a little bit better so we'll swing up to a base oh, sorry it's a crosswind be flying due north nice and easy at east mids because the runway is east west so everything's all at 90 degrees You wouldn't do a close-in circuit like this at an international airport unless it was low visibility, but we're just interested in the radio stuff. Fiddles are really sticky, it's not helping. Now we'll fly downwind, so due east, and we'll be looking for that NDB. Now, the other way we can do it is, you know, a lot of airports don't have an NDB on their approach. Um, but we can look at the DME. So we've got a distance measuring equipment radio at East Mids, and it's on the same frequency as the ILS. Normally always is. Um, so it will tell us how far away from the runway we are. So we can use that. And we probably want to be about four miles, something like that, four, four nautical miles um, away from the runway when we start our approach in a light aircraft like this. I mean, you could do it significantly less. Um, in an airliner, obviously, you'd want a lot more space to get yourself lined up because it's flying faster and doesn't turn as quick. So if we didn't have the NDB, and actually, if I just pan and across here so I now can't see that at all I'm, I can only see what you can see there and we'll look at the DME instead and we'll use that to determine when we should turn base so we'll just make sure we're going easterly here I'm not to turn the yoke too much so I can actually see that radio at the moment I can't see it which is good that's what we want and we're just looking at the DME, which is down here. You can see it's two and a half miles at the moment, 2.6. Also giving us our speed. 
Oh, I've just pressed a button. Okay. Force of habit. And we're flying, so we're about four miles out. Now, the NDB itself is about four miles out. So we should be flying a reasonably similar circuit here. There or thereabouts. It's about four miles. Now, of course, we're slightly north of the runway, so you would actually have to do a bit of trigonometry to work out how far you want to be on the hypotenuse that will be. Um, but four miles, it's not a big number. Um, the, the sign of the angle is going to be close to one, so not going to make much of a difference. There's four miles, so let's swing in. And we'll swing in. Jesus, the rudder pedals need oil in. And we'll come in due south, because we know that it's an east-west runway. The due south should be a nice base leg. There we go, we can see the runway over there. We can see we're just crossing the centre line, so we'll swing round onto our final turn. Slightly too late there, you would want to anticipate it. I didn't think we were quite that close in. And we'll try and pick up the ILS. And actually, let's just prove a point. Let's not look out the window at all. So I'm all I'm looking at here is this instrument. Obviously, I want to know what our height is, speed, um, attitude, distance to go. But we should be able to get wheels on the ground without looking out the window. Now, how confident are you in my flying ability? Hopefully more confident than I am. Particularly with these pedals are really biting me at the moment. They're sticking. So the glide is above us, so we want to, well, we don't want to increase our airspeed. We've got loads of airspeed. I'm going to be naughty and dump a bit of flap early. We've just crossed the centre line, so we're doing what's called pilot-induced oscillation around the centre line, PIO. All very well and good having nice, accurate instruments, but if the pilots are numpty, then uh, we're not going to win, are we? So almost on that sense line, so I'm going to anticipate the turn. Start. We're still very low. This really is a uh, rub your tummy, pat your head job, and I'm not particularly familiar. <laughs> uh, not well, yeah, familiar or competent with this aircraft. So still a smidge low, but we're good on the sense line now. Well, that's nice. We're almost good on the glide now as well, so I'm going to dump a smidge more flat. The closer in we get, the more twitchy these arrows, these indicators are going to become. And you can see as much as me, I can't see out of the window at all. I can see that tiny bit off the left hand side. And I'm hoping that we're going to see the runway and I can just see it there. I'm just going to hold the nose up. And are we on? Oh, yeah, we are. Wings weren't very level. So there you go. It works. Even with a numpty flying like me, you can use the ILS to ensure that you're coming down on your glide, or far too low on it if you're like me, and you can get your localizer for the centre line. As we saw at Gibraltar on uh, one of the earlier videos, that only has a localizer. In fact, no, Jib doesn't have anything. Thinking about it, Jib doesn't have anything. We'll um, do some airfields where you will only have a localizer. You won't have a glide slope at all. So it won't be a full ILS. It'll just be a localizer approach. Now, you can also get NDB approaches. They're fruity because you don't have any indication of whether you're to the left or to the right of the sensor line it just points towards effectively the middle of the runway now the decision height on that will be quite high because the radio itself physically isn't going to be in the middle of the runway because you, you'll clobber it so it has to be offset 
So you need to have actually seen the runway well before you get to that point, because otherwise you're going to fly, you know, if you're flying towards it, you'll physically be flying towards the radio, which will be not in the middle of the runway. So you need to have seen the runway much higher up. And uh, you can get VOR approaches, which are, as I didn't say this, but pretty much just a localizer. Difference is the VOR might not be on the center line of the runway. In fact, it almost certainly will not be. The VOR will be offset, like we've just talked about for the NDB. So again, it will give you a rough line into the runway and the rough heading you want to be, but you need to have actually seen the runway quite high up to then be able to correct and actually land on the runway itself. A localizer is guaranteed to give you the center line of that runway. And the glide slope is guaranteed to give you a glide slope onto the point at which you want to put your wheels on the floor. There are exceptions, however. You can get offset ILSs and things like that. We will talk about those in a later video. Um, we'll do the offset approach probably into Innsbruck in Austria or something like that. Um, and I'll show you how, how they can be used. Um, there's there's a few yeah you know, there's a fair few others uh, I've just parked up in the airliner rather than in the GA parking which I thought I was going to which is over there but never mind um, so yeah hope you find that useful and interesting that's the ILS very good if you're in bad visibility it gets you close to the ground close enough that you can hopefully see the floor see the runway more importantly and equally at night time but at night time you'd have the runway lights on and we prove that it can be done even with a numpty like me flying and not looking out of the window so the last thing to do before i forget and before i press all the buttons that clear it let's have a quick look so our first pattern we flew out and we waited until we were due north of the NDB and then we turned and that's exactly what we did. Our turn started when we were about here, which is pretty much due north. So that was pretty good. We flew straight in to East Mids East until we overflew the NDB. And at that point we turned and you can see how much you know, how long it takes to turn and how far off the centre line we were by not anticipating that. We didn't know how far away we were from EME. Yes, Pippa, I know you're a cat. Um, because it's there's no distance measuring equipment, so we actually had to wait for the needle to fall over. Um, and we weren't looking out the window and cheating and so on. And then we turned in and followed um, the localizer and the glide in and that was pretty good our second circuit we waited until we were four miles from the runway and as we can see here we turned a little bit earlier why well east mids east is probably a smidge more than four miles but not a huge amount more but here we can see the trigonometry come into play that's four miles probably there so the hypotenuse of the triangle, yeah, there we go, get some tread going, is probably four miles, even though actually the adjacent, um, in fact, no, yeah, it would be, it'd be the adjacent. Anyway, the base of this triangle, you know, four miles will push us out a little bit further than we would want to be. No, that'd be the opposite, wouldn't it? Anyway, whatever. I don't do trig very often these days. This is the PIO I was talking about, so the pilot-induced oscillation, because I was trying to find that centre line. I was waiting until I got past it before turning in, and then got past it and turned in, and you end up wibbly-wobbling in. That is purely down to pilot skill, um, so or, or lack thereof of pilot skill. And you can see where I had more reference points, so I could look out of the window and so on, that oscillation is much, much more reduced because I've got more things to reference and feel comfortable looking at. Whereas when I couldn't look out of the window, you could see this big oscillation going on here. 
Now, this is also an artifact of us trying to get the localizer very close in, because that needle's quite switchy the closer in you get. If we'd started much further out here, it would have been less twitchy, which would have made my job of capturing it properly a lot easier, and the oscillation would have been much, much uh, smaller um, until you get really close in, at which case, you know, everything gets twitchy and you start panicking. But it was still, it was good enough, you know, for someone who, who, who sat on a chair, not in the aircraft, so you can't feel the bumps and moves, uh, and the G-forces and so on, you know, it, it, and someone who, who doesn't fly, you know, regularly, it wasn't a bad attempt. So there we are. That's your ILS. Hope you enjoyed. I'll have a head scratch as to what the next video is going to be, but I look forward to seeing you then. Stay safe. Bye-bye.